Hey, what's up guys, back with another video. And today, uh, the subject is gonna be a little bit more controversial, um, more so among RX-8 owners, but rotary owners in general. And that is, what oil should I use? <laughs> yeah, so uh, RX-8 owners seem to be lost puppies when it comes to this subject. Um, that you go on any RX-8 pages and every single day there'll be at least 10 or more uh, posts asking what oil should you use. Um, I'm doing an oil change on the RX-8 today, and uh, well, here's what I'm using. Uh, as seen in my uh, oil change video, which was, I don't know how many videos ago, um, I put 10W40 uh, in my RX-8 uh, because it was winter months, you know, colder temperatures call for a thinner weight. Uh, well, to RX-8s on uh, paper, this is actually way, way too thick because here in North America, uh, the U.S. and Canada, or whatever, uh, oil cap says 5W20. Now, 5W20 is an unacceptable weight to use in any rotary engine, regardless of which uh, model it's in, whatever, what, what year it is, whatever. It's way too thin. doesn't protect your bearings at all. Um, I'll go over that more technically in just a minute. But um, anyway, uh, the minimum weight you should be using is a uh, 10W30. I use 10W40 by uh, preference in both my RX-7 and RX-8. And what tells me that that's you know the correct weight to use is something called Blackstone Labs. And for those of you who don't know what Blackstone Labs is, and they're not sponsoring this video at all, by the way, um, they're a company that you send uh, oil samples to, and they test it, and they tell you what's in your oil. Um, I've done this twice on the RX-8 using 10W40 and uh, both tests came back with some interesting results and uh, Let's see on, on the screen. You should be seeing that now um, if you look at it uh, What you'll notice is a uh, copper which would be bearing material, which is what the bearings are made of um, Let's see if I can grab a rotor and show you that bearings and stat gear bearings which uh, ride on the eccentric shaft uh, those are made of copper and if you can see right there, there's some exposed copper right on the uh, seam. That always makes its way back into your oil. Um, no matter what you do, there's always going to be some amount of copper that makes its way into the oil. And um, yeah, that, that measures that. And uh, on the on both oil tests, uh, using it in as low as like 10 degrees up to like 30 degrees, which is a northern Utah weather. Uh, for the uh, for winter, uh, both tests showed that I had about half the average amount of what's in uh, any given RX-8 engine that uses recommended oil or whatever. Um, they didn't give me any specifics on that, but uh, the value the value on the test was uh, one, and the average is like two. So that means that I'm uh, getting bearing wear at half the normal rate of uh, the average RX-8 engine. Um, the only the only thing that was of uh, any major concern was the amount of aluminum and chrome or chromium on the test results. And what that means is housing chrome. So here is a uh, 1974, 75 uh, repu housing. And this is the uh, the chrome and well, housing is made of aluminum. And mine was actually kind of through the roof. And what that would suggest is that my housings are chipping or something like that. Uh, it gives a little description in the uh, in the test results and I'll, I'll pull those test results up again so you can see those. But um, yeah, if you look at this housing, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of chrome missing from it and exposed aluminum. So we can find a really bad area. So chrome chipping on the housing is what that, that would suggest. And that does make its way back into the oil. Um, not as much, I guess, because it's uh, they're separate systems. But it does make its way back into the oil, and that was of concern. So what I ended up doing was uh, doubling my premix ratio. So because my uh, Series 2 engine has a uh, OMP on it, which it's really hard to separate them, Actually, I'll take you over to my other S2 engine so I can show you more visually what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, so here's my other Series 2 engine. It's just kind of sitting there in the bay in a completely stripped out car. But um, 
Here are the oil metering pumps on the Series 2 engine. Yes, there are two of them. One and two. And the excessive uh, chrome and aluminum that's in my oil in both test results tell me that one or both of them have failed or are failing. They're not doing their job. And uh, also on the Series 2 engines, there are three oil injectors per housing. I don't know if I can get a good shot there. I kind of see it there. Yeah, one, two, and three back there. Yeah, so the, the proper lubrication isn't getting to uh, one or both of my housings through the oil metering pump system. And I've been pre-mixing at half an ounce per gallon, which is the correct ratio to do with, uh, oh, yeah, pre-mix. Let's show you what that is. Yeah, so pre-mix is uh, just two-stroke oil. Uh, it's a specific blend from Itamitsu. That's a synthetic blend or whatever. Put that in your gas and when you fill up and that goes through the fuel system and helps lubricate your, uh, your apex hills and housings a little bit better. Um, these are the old bottles and here are the new ones. I like the old ones better, but I like the cap better. Anyway, uh, pre-mixing at half an ounce per gallon, that's the correct ratio to do with a uh, working oil metering pump system. But without, it would be one ounce per gallon. So for this last oil change interval, I've been pre-mixing one ounce per gallon uh, with the oil metering pump hooked up. I mean, you saw it's like connected on top of the engine and stuff. In the engine bay, it's all covered up like that. So yeah, a little bit of a job to, uh, to block that off. And I've noticed that my engine's been using less and less uh, sump oil uh, over the last oil change interval. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure my oil metering pumps are failing. So that's why I've been pre-mixing one ounce per gallon. But, uh, let's see, the main subject of this video, uh, oil weights. So, because it's an average of 70 degrees or more outside, um, I'm going up to 20W50. Now both of these weights, RX-8 owners have an absolute bitch fit about because, well, the dealer or the manufacturer recommends 5W20 and they think that 5W30 is like helping a bunch of shit and at operating temperature in the winter, that's perfectly fine, but what you're doing a five weight uh, when the engine's, you know, cold starting. So you're not getting as much lubrication as you should be, uh, you know, on cold starts. So until, oh yeah, what a lesson on uh, oil weights. Uh, I won't give like super, super detailed um, descriptions for either, but 10 weight is your cold start. You know, when your engine is uh, dead cold, uh, this is the, uh, the weight of the oil. Then when it gets up to operating temperature, 40 would be the, uh, you know, the oil weight that it's uh, working at, at full operating temperature. And 20W50, well, it's the exact same thing. 20 at a, a cold and then 50 at full operating temperature. And something that a lot of RX-8 owners don't know about their engines, about it. I don't know too much about the, uh, the four port automatics. They use a different style bearing, um, different part number, whatever. I think they're smaller or something like that. Not sure. But the Series uh, 2 and Series 1 6 ports all use the exact same bearings found in the Series 6 REW. Same bearings, same dimensions on the E shaft, same stat gear bearings, all the same, same the whole way through. And uh, there is absolutely zero reason why you should be using such a thin uh, weight oil in your RX-8 engine. It's, it's just killing your bearings, that's all it's doing. And, you know, both oil tests that I've done so far on 10W40 through winter prove that. I, my uh, bearings are showing half the, uh, the amount of wear as the average rennesis. But as far as oil weight recommendations from, uh, directly from Mazda, on the older engines prior to the RX-8, um, the weights that are recommended are 10W30 for uh, cold temperatures, outside temperatures, and stuff like that. I think the uh, let's see. I think the minimum for uh, 20W50, which is the other recommended oil weight, is uh, 70 degrees plus, or that's at least where I change it at, and it's about 7 degrees average outside. Um, I know this is a lot of talking, and I'm kind of blabbing and maybe going over the same things 
you know, more than once or twice. But uh, this is just something I want to hit really hard on because people are killing their engines by using the wrong oil. So the answer to your question, which oil should you use, regardless of your region, your climate, uh, whatever, if you're below 70 degrees average, 10W30 or 40, if that's your preference, that's my preference. If you're above 70 degrees average, I don't know what that changes over to you in Celsius, but you know, Google it, change it over, whatever. Above 70 degrees, 20W50. Those are the correct oil weights. And over the next three oil changes, I'm gonna be uh, doing the same test. And uh, well, I'll keep you guys updated on that. But for now, um, gonna change my oil. When I get to the point where I uh, take the sample or whatever, I'll show you how to do that. Actually, where is that little test kit? I gotta go find that. Put it down somewhere and I don't remember. Okay, found it. So, Blackstone Labs. Uh, just check them out on Google or whatever and uh, just check out their site. These kits they send you are free. They send you them for free and then sometimes they'll send you like two or more kits for your future oil changes and stuff. But let's open this and see what's in the kit. So of course you have the container. Um, once you get this, this is a return label. Very nice return label. This is what you use to take the sample. This is a little information sheet. You just put your, uh, your information on it and we'll go from there. Little absorbent material stuff. You just wrap this up in and then, well, yeah, this is a little uh, reminder sheet thing. I don't, I don't use these. I just look at my, uh, my odometer and remember that way. And then once you take your sample, you just put it in the bag and then wrap it up in this, put it back in with your information sheet, preferably on the outside of your absorbent material stuff so that these don't mix and whatever. And send it off. And then within like a week or something like that, you'll get your test results back. Um, I got mine both in my email and, uh, yeah. Also, one other thing to mention, with a Series 2 RX-8 specifically, always use the OEM filter. If you don't use the OEM filter, then it doesn't have the correct bypasses in it. I know there's some on a, online that say that they're fine for a Series 2 RX-8 engine, but they cost more money. There's no real benefit to them at all. Um, well, it's not the correct filter. Go to the dealer, spend like eight to ten dollars, get the right filter, and be done with it. Anyway, I'm gonna go through the oil change stuff now and then get back to you when I'm done with that. Okay, now I got my oil sample. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, put it in the bag. And then you wanna close or seal the bag up in a way that it doesn't have much air in it that way you can cram it in there and stuff like that and I need two hands to do that so give me some okay now that that's uh it's all done you just want to put it in just like that it's all hugging it in there and stuff like that ah. stupid i have tape this up now but uh, anyway um you have this little information sheet uh let's see Sample date, so put today's date. Uh, you specify if it's miles, um, hours, kilometers, whatever. And then uh, just, just whatever it asks for. And if you wanna add some specific details, like I'm gonna add some that say, uh, the first 2000 miles of this uh, oil sample was used in like 30 to 45 degrees or something like that. Then the last thousand, which was on my uh, trip to Rotocon and back in uh, Las Vegas was about a thousand miles. So that was about mid seventies to up to a hundred degrees. So I'll add some details like that. And then, you know, what type of engine it is and whatever. And on the back here, what do you got on the back? Yeah, you put like your billing information like that. And then whatever questions you have, also your make, model, and year, whatever. Uh, just just put all that stuff, but it's it's pretty simple and straightforward But if you really want to know what's going on inside of your engine without having to take your engine completely apart Blackstone Labs is definitely the way to go 
but um let's see probably in about a week maybe less than a week depends on when i get the uh the results back i'll make an update video and uh just talk about the results specifically and not drag on with any of this stuff whatever and uh yeah we'll go from there Anyway, if you liked this video, if it helped you out at all, I answered some questions, or if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'm more than willing to answer whatever questions you got, or to the best of my ability. Other than that, uh, give this video a like, subscribe if you want, and uh, see you next time.